guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a video that I've never done before. I've always been too scared and that is a bookshelf tour. I'm very excited to show you around my bookshelves. I'm very proud of them. I feel like beforehand I used to have not very good bookshelves at the start of my booktube journey. I look at them now and they bring me a lot of joy. <laughs> So a few things to note before we get into it because I kind of just want to dive straight in because it's probably going to take a long time. Number one, the books on my bookshelves are only my red books. I keep my unread books separate. Like I panics me <laughs> to put them together and I organize my books by genre but within that it's like a free-for-all you know I don't necessarily always group authors together not even series I have a few series that are separated which I'll show you because for me it's all down to how it looks I want it to look a certain way I want certain sizes to go together so yeah let's just dive straight into it and I will show you genre by genre shelf by shelf my bookshelves these are my shelves from a distance. I am really happy with them. The reason that I wanted to show you this bookshelf tour now is because I reckon in the next six months or so, I'm gonna swap these two bookshelves around. That is a full size one, like this one, and this is a half one. <laughs> the reason I put them that way around to begin with is because the only plug sockets in my whole room that I can access are down there, right, oh, right at the edge of the end of this bookshelf. But it's getting to the point now where I need more space on this shelf in particular and I don't just want to hide the books away so I think we're gonna drill <laughs> a hole into the bottom of that bookshelf so that it can be pressed up against the wall and the, the leads and plugs can still come through at the bottom so that's probably gonna happen within the next six months or so when I only want to do it when I really run out of space so that's why I wanted to do the bookshelf tour now if I just tilt the camera down this is the last of my red books on this shelf this is the last of my red books on this shelf these are all red books so <laughs> the mess that is those three shelves yeah that's unread books but a lot of my unread books are in this car I'm debating getting another car for these but I don't really have space for that so we'll just see how it goes. But yeah, those are unread and pfft, ugly. <laughs> They're just shoved in. Let's go look shelf by shelf now. For this top shelf, slight problem in that my tripod doesn't go up any higher. I promise all the other shelves it will look nice and straight on but I've tried putting it the camera further away on my bed and zooming in but then the picture quality is awful so this is what we're dealing with okay for the first shelf this first shelf is all fantasy paperbacks I don't tend to separate like YA and adult books I just lump them all in together so this is all my paperbacks because I like that they are all on the same level a few highlights here the green bone saga this shelf is pretty packed in so it's sometimes hard to see they're all gonna fall apart now um sometimes hard to get them out i love the green bone saga this is definitely a highlight for me the first one jade city i did not love as much but these two i absolutely adored this is such a great fantasy series probably one of my favorite like epic fantasy series ever but i do have an arc here of under the whispering door by tj clune that was a five star favorite we've got the whole of the raven cycle here fifth season by nk jemison is a favorite vicious by v.e schwab the Rook by Daniel O'Malley has been a surprise favourite this year. I'd never heard of it until Mara recommended it in Bookshoe Twin Test and I just loved this. I cannot wait to read more in this series. But as you'll see further on, there's a few series I've split up because back when I had just started liking books, I didn't realise the importance of getting magic editions. So Vicious is here on its own when I do have Vengeful. Renegade's on here is here on its own when I do have the second books in the series and we have Scythe and the Toll in paperback and then I have Thunderhead in hardback so that's somewhere else as well but even though I've messed this up a bit trying to pull books out I just like all the paperbacks to be together okay much nicer angle now <laughs> Now we can be straight on. So this shelf started off as my like favorite hardback fantasy shelf essentially, but it's kind of become not quite that. Also we have Ninth House behind Fair and the Nightingale. Um, there's all my Lee Bardugo hard covers that I have. I wanted obviously Six of Crows and Cookie Kingdom and Ninth House to be on this shelf, but Shadow and Bone and King of Scars just look really nice with them. <laughs> 
because <laughs> they kind of match with the black and the foil. So even though those two aren't favorites, they're on the shelf because I like how they look. One day, probably they'll get moved off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> but for now they stay on there. I love the edition I have of Shadow and Bone that's from Fairy Loot, even if I don't love the book. <laughs> and also I love my Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom editions. I've just read King of Scars. I have a special edition of Ninth House as well. This is like I think the Waterstones special edition um, and I do really like it. It is signed to Megan. I met Miss Lee Bardugo, legend. I do like that spine. Obviously it goes with those ones, with the black and the foil, but I also love the blue ombre of Ninth House, so I'm undecided. I might get rid of the dust jacket, especially because I feel like the dust jacket is starting to look a bit old in places, like it's starting to look a bit wrinkled. Should I just do that now? I'm gonna do it now and I can change my mind afterwards. Then we have some of my most prized possessions, my fairy loot special editions of the Bear and the Nightingale series. I don't often buy special editions of books even if I love them, like when the Heartstopper special editions have come out, I haven't bought them. I just like, if I own the book already, I tend to not buy them. I tend to like, to buy special editions initially rather than buy books I already own. But the editions that I had of Bear and Light and Girl, I still have them. I think they're like behind, they're stacked behind some of these. But I had like two paperbacks and then one hardback that was like a mid-size hardback. It was a really awkward size. So I just didn't like the editions that, that I had had I looked on the shelves in my current format. So yeah, I knew I had to get these. I got them for Christmas. I didn't actually get them myself because I'm uh, that scares me. So yeah, they're really, really gorgeous. I think one of my favorite ones is actually this one that's hidden by the plant, Winter of the Witch. I just love these designs and they have lovely kind of graphics that go with the colors on the end pages. Then hiding behind the plant here, I just have the physical editions of the Way with Children series, which I own. I do not own all of this series physically. I do want to, but again, I struggle to justify buying stuff that I already read. Even though I am gonna reread the series when I get them physically, I just listened to the audiobooks before that. And then we have my two Erin Morgansons, the only two books she's ever written, but two of my favorite fantasy books ever. I view Erin Morganston as a favorite author, even if she hasn't reached the three required because I mean, <laughs> She's only written two books and they're two of my favourite fantasies. The Starless Sea is one of my favourite books I own. Again, it was like a special edition that came out but at the time and it was just one of my first memories of like getting a book and falling in love with it immediately. I remember opening it, I remember being so happy with the inside colours I got because I think they did like three colours and that blue was the one that I really wanted so yeah, I just hold, it holds a very special place in my heart. And I also have the special edition of The Night Circus. This was a special edition I think they did for the anniversary of it. I love this edition so, so much. I just love the designs on the inside. I just think it's so gorgeous. And then the last book on this shelf is The Once and Future Witches. This is an Illumicrate edition that I had with red sprayed edges. I'm very excited to reread this at some point, maybe in the next couple years, because I feel like when I read it, I read it kind of rushed. Next shelf. This is where all of my full size hardcover fantasies go that aren't up on that shelf above. So we have Arch Enemies and Supernova by Marissa Mayer and Heartless by Marissa Mayer, Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is very annoying because <laughs> even though I have the same editions of the Diviners, which is lucky, it's very rare, uh, two are hardcover and two are paperback. So they can't go together <laughs> because I do things by height and group with fantasy. We have the last two there and the first two up here. Um, Girls of Paper and Fire and Girls of Storm and Shadow. I still need to read the last one in that series. And then we have this duology, The Ravens and the Monarchs, which I really enjoy. Then here is like mid-size <laughs> hardbacks. Um, Midnight Library, Symmetry Boys, Thunderhead is there. <laughs> <laughs> separated from uh, Scythe and the Tull. Yeah, a Skinful of Shadows is a favourite book from this year. I absolutely loved it and I really like this just style of cover. I love this edition of Amari and the Night Brothers. This is one of my favourite middle grade fantasies I think I've ever read. Yeah, it was just really special. So I actually need to remember to get the matching Waterstones edition for this when the next one comes out. I think it's like 
just come out or just about to come out the second one here and then i also love this edition of the invisible life of abby larue that i have it has like sparkly gold edges it also has these gorgeous end pages and i mean come on <laughs> this gorgeous design here so yeah I love this so much and then just over here I have a few more paperbacks that used to be on the shelf above but there's no space on there anymore so I have two middle grade fantasies which I really enjoyed but I haven't continued on with the series even though I need to and then the deep I literally just read <laughs> and had to put it somewhere so I went there um and then this is a little Wooloo that I have on my shelves um Wooloo is a Pokemon that I love and my mum got someone to make this for me and it's so cute so that just lives on my shelf and it always makes me happy <laughs> last bit of fantasy is here obviously again we had <laughs> smaller hardbacks here um, middle games were my favorite vengeful was disappointing for me house of the cerulean sea one of my favorite fantasies the wicker king i hate so i love having the book stacked like this but i hate when I have to get a book out of them because it just like it's very hard to ruin, not ruin everything. So the Wicker King is super cool because the pages get darker in this as one of our protagonist's mental state becomes worse. Um, and there's also like lots of mixed media elements in this one as well. There's like a mixtape there. And then I ran out of hardbacks <laughs> that size. So then I have like my tour novellas. These are the only four that I've read. But I really enjoy tour novellas. I feel like they do the best novellas. So I put them all together. Then this little section here is my like magical realism-y, fabulism -y stuff. Some highlights for me are Watch Over Me by Katrina Leno. I love this book so much. It's a signed copy. But I love how her eyes are closed on the cover and then her eyes open on the inside so cool you must not miss by Katrina Leno this is a very very good book I absolutely love this I read it right at the end I think of 2020 so I didn't get to go on my best of this which I was really annoyed because I'd already filmed it um and then the other highlight I would say is Dig by A.S. King I love this book so much I love the cover I think it's got such a cool interesting cover it's just a very special book it's by far my favorite A.S. King that I have ever read and then this last little bit here is my sci-fi collection let me just scoot that over a little bit so you can see it better um i don't read a ton of sci-fi as you can see um but i do love it whenever i read it so i probably should pick it up more i actually read six sci-fi novellas this year as ebooks but yeah i don't own a lot physically project tell mary a great one such a great one a history of what comes next by sylvain nouvelle it's a very unique sci-fi <laughs> i wouldn't necessarily recommend it to everyone it's told in a very unique way it's very strange it's set historically where these characters are trying to influence historical events but um yeah i'm very excited to get to the sequel of that and then i do have the illuminate series which i will say i've stopped talking about on my channel as much because i don't love some of the stuff jay christoph has done but it would be remiss of me to not admit this is my favorite sci-fi that i have ever read particularly gemina the second one these are let me show you through illuminate these are mixed media so they're so cool told through production logs um countdowns emails like uh, so much interesting stuff it's such an imaginative story and i absolutely love them they were all five stars to me that was very early on in my reading journey and i loved them so much so that is all of our fantasy and sci-fi shelves okay first mystery thriller shelf again we have this ugly <laughs> looking up at the shelf sorry about it so we have two ruth wares here the turn of the key is the one that started it all this is the first thriller mystery i ever 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 read it ever read so i love ruth Ware a lot because of that i love one by one by ruth Ware, even if everyone else doesn't love it this edition of the project by courtney summers is very special to me as courtney summers sent it to me herself she signed it it is the um barnes and noble special edition which obviously i can't get in the uk so yeah i definitely value it a lot i love it very much as you can see my original copy is there but i i present this one facing out because i love it a lot we have the man who died twice by richard osman no exit one of my favorite thrillers without a doubt like one of the best thriller 
thrillers I have ever read. The Maid and the Paris Apartment were two of my most anticipated books of this year, I would say. I liked them both. The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton, I like to present out because I just love these edges so so much. I think they look so cool. I love edges that have designs in them not just colours. I just love love those edges so that's why I decided to present it that way. Next shelf. These shelves will look quicker because they're a lot smaller. Okay we have my edition of Murder on the Orient Express. I love <laughs> love these editions so much of the Agatha Christie books I just think they're so gorgeous I have quite a few of them I presented them all face out that I got even the ones I hadn't read yet but then they've slowly disappeared from the shelves so I've read more mysteries and thrillers but Murder on the Express first Agatha Christie I ever read and still probably my favorite then we have a good girl's guide to murder series my favorite YA mystery series I love it so much and then here for this set apart from Catherine House almost doesn't really fit but so for the rest I went for like a black and red vibe I really like how it looks so I have two Rally Sagers here the last time I lied is one that I much preferred Thursday Murder Club was my favorite book of last year I love it very much the Man Who Died Twice is up there obviously they're separate because I was going for the red and black theme so I needed it very excited for the third one to come out and although I didn't love the appeal it's not that I didn't love it actually it's that I had such high hopes for it that were kind of ridiculous um I love this edition of it I got the hardcover edition after reading reading it and unhauled my other one just because I love this edition so much um yeah I really like it I'm glad I have this edition maybe I'll reread that at some point but is there much I mean rereading mysteries is always interesting because like what's the point but um I feel like I was too harsh on it and it could have actually been one of my favorite books all time but I was just like expecting ridiculous amounts from it next shelf we have the Maureen Johnson uh, mysteries the truly devious series I <laughs> I have these all in paperback and I'm always behind with reading this series because the paperback only comes out a year after the hardback has been out every single time so I think the paperback for the fourth one a box in the woods has only just come out so I don't own it yet I'm always behind because now that I have them in paperback I need them in paperback this my favorite one of my favorite books of all time. I mean, I think I say I prefer European Travel for the Monstrous Gentleman, which is the second. My favorite series of all time. Let me move these and we can look at them in all their glory. The Athena Club Mysteries. I love them so much. I've got them slightly in the wrong order, but I think I have to in order to hold European Travel up because it's like 800 pages. This is a series following a group of monstrous girls solving mysteries. It has a lot of characters from like Gothic Victorian literature in it. I think European Travel is my favourite, but maybe only because it's the longest. <laughs> and I just love these girls and these characters so much, I would take 20 more books. Genuinely, I would like read it forever for the rest of my life. There's still a tiny part of me that hopes and prays that one day we will get more books. Like, I'm not done with the series. Sometimes you read a series and you're like, right, I'm satisfied. Not with this. Never with this. <laughs> I really like the levels on this shelf. I like having the two of those stacked below it and then having this one face out and framed by other books. I, this is like one of my favourite sections on the shelf just because of how it looks. And then here they got pushed away <laughs> but I have some like blue coloured Death on the Nile just hiding behind there. This used to be like here and it's got pushed back slowly but um like bluish <laughs> mysteries. The Broken Girls by Simone St. James, one of my favourite books I've read so far this year. The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie, definitely one that I enjoyed a lot a really good place also to start-ish with Agatha Christie and The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware I love her new design of covers I'm very excited to get the last two that I haven't read this was such a surprise that I loved this so much I read it on a cruise in the Norwegian Fjords when that's set on a cruise in the Norwegian Fjords and it was just such a highlight this shelf is pretty simple I have not read the ABC Murders this is actually the only one of these editions that I haven't read yet that um is still on here <laughs> the rest have been removed this will probably go soon when i need more space this can be where new mysteries go that i need to put places so yeah this will probably go very soon when i read a few more mysteries this stack here i liked going from light to dark from dark to light sorry secret history by donna's heart i'm not gonna get out because getting this stack out will be like the worst thing i've ever done in my life <laughs> This book was the book that got me back into reading. Back in the day, many years ago, this was the book that did it. Waterstones are coming out with, I'll put it on the screen, a new special edition, which I think I'm gonna have to buy. 
<laughs> I think I'm gonna have to get that. So that will probably be replaced or just like put behind the books because that new edition is so gorgeous. Other highlights here. Not really any of those. Those were all kind of like three or four stars, the rest of those. But The Guest List by Lucy Foley, one of my favourite mysteries ever again. Oh, you can see a few books hiding behind there that don't get to be out front because I don't have space. Yeah, this was one of my favourite mysteries ever. And I do have another edition of it that I originally read. This is not the one that I read, but I love the US edition and the Book of the Month edition. This was before I worked with Book of the Month. I paid one of my subscribers <laughs> from America to send me this. And um, I'm glad I did because I love, I love the cover. And then this is my final mystery thriller shelf. We have some hearts hardbacks here, a few Riley Sager, a Sherry Lapina, not many there that I loved. I'd say my highlight on this shelf, this was a five star, was They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This is about a female serial killer who kills shitty men and I live, girl, I live. My other highlight on these shelves is definitely the Lady Hardcastle Mysteries. This is my favorite cozy mystery series and the In the Market for Murder one, which is the second one, is by far my favorite. So that one is Face Out. Um, yeah, I love that series so much, <laughs> so much. So yeah, I've definitely got a few Face Outs on the mystery thriller shelf that can be removed when I need more space. So that's why I'm thinking maybe six months time I'll need to rearrange the shelves because this is the shelf that I'm running out of space on. The rest, like fantasy, I've still got a fair amount of space. But yeah, this is the shelves I'm already running out of space from. Okay, time for the final half shelves. <laughs> This, this one is so hard to film angle-wise. So this is my contemporary shelf. Highlights on here. Um, not many five stars. Oh, okay. The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta is by far my favorite book ever written in verse. I love this book so much. I read it, I remember, on a 24-hour readathon and it's just incredible. You see there's like a few illustrations throughout as well. I love this one so much. It's a story of a boy this gay black boy from pretty much birth up until young adulthood and just the story of his life and it's just gorgeous. I cannot wait to read more Dean Atta. If you want to cry, I have two recommendations for you. First, The Travelling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arakawa. This made me <laughs> weep. It made me weep. It's incredible. It's a story of um, a man and his cat, their close relationship, and they're trying to find a new owner for the cat. We don't know why, but the man is going around to all his friends trying to find someone who he thinks would be a good fit for the cat. And as someone who loves cats, what a heartbreaking book to read. Probably only one book has made me cry more, and that is Love, Aubrey by Suzanne Lafleur. This was a favourite childhood book of mine, and I reread it a couple years ago, and it's just like, nothing makes me cry more than this book. I think it shouldn't even be a kid's book, because it's just like, it's the worst. It's so sad. And obviously this is like a very old edition. I don't think it's ever been republished. I don't think many people have read this necessarily, but yeah, this is not my edition from childhood. I got rid of it because I went through a stage of just getting rid of like all my old books, which I really regret. So I re-purchased it and I'm so glad that I did. Then we have romance here and then we have a small bit of poetry here. I'd say my favourite poetry is by Charlie Cox. I have She Must Be Mad and Validate Me. Um, Charlie Cox is definitely my favourite poet and I met her and she was absolutely lovely. But yeah, that's I don't read a ton of poetry, so that's all I have for that. Romance, I mean, <laughs> The Love Hypothesis by Ellie Hazelwood. My favorite romance ever. It's untouchable, it is the best. I'm so excited to get Love on the Brain and hopefully read that soon. And I would say my next favorite on this list, probably my favorite YA romance I've ever read is Fat Chance Charlie Vega. I love this cover as well. I just love the peach and the gold. And yeah, this is probably one of the only like YA contemporary romances other than like graphic novels I've ever given five Five stars. I really, really loved it. I thought it had such great relationships, such a great main character, and I'm super excited to read Crystal Madonna's next book. Then we have my graphic novel shelf, which of course are gorgeous, and I would love to show you them, but getting them out is just the worst thing ever. <laughs> so a few favourites. Heartstopper. Oh, here she goes at the bottom. My favourite graphic novel series 
forever. I love Nick and Charlie. This is the first graphic novel I ever read. Heartstop is just the best, but I feel like we all know that now. I recently read the sequel to Sheets, which I only gave Sheets four stars, but I loved Delicate. It was such a touching, moving story about loneliness, about depression for young kids. This is like a middle grade graphic novel series. And I really loved the illustration style and just the tones with like the pinks and the blues. I really, really liked. And then my other favourite is at the back here, if I can get it out. Um, the Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill. I've only read the first one. I do own them all. But like, come on. I have the Tea Dragon uh, card game. I would love to get some of the plushies because like you can get plushies of the little tea dragons. I mean, they're so cute. This is like the cutest graphic novel series. I can't believe I haven't read the second and third one yet. I'm just like saving them because I know that's it. And I'm like, I have to read them at the perfect time. So yeah, absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> horror shelf looking at this there's not loads that i loved i'm still figuring out what my favorite kind of horror is i'd say my favorites are moon of the crested snow by robig shagrise this is getting a sequel soon which really excites me this is like a post-apocalyptic um horror set in an indigenous community and just seeing how they cope with the apocalypse essentially and with the situation was really interesting I really did enjoy Wilder Girls when I read it. Don't think I gave it five stars, but I think it was really cool. And Burn Our Bodies Down didn't live up to it. And now Roy's Power's latest one's like a fantasy fantasy, which is kind of not what I expected. But uh, Wilder Girls is a very unique kind of horror. Um, so yeah, I definitely enjoyed that. And I love Year of the Witching by Alexis Henson. I wish I had the US cover, but I have the UK one. And this is like a cult book with witches and plagues and oh just the whole story was absolutely wonderful there was supposed to be a sequel to that but i don't think it's happening anymore then we have my historical fiction shelf all the like we cannot see by anthony doa is one of the early historical fictions i read before i had my channel and this is one of the only books ever i've stayed up late to finish i very rarely ever do that but this was one of the first books that i just like could not stop reading and absolutely loved and then obviously Malibu Rising, Daisy Jones and the Six and Evelyn Hugo, some of my favourites. <laughs> I'll just show you my battered copy of Evelyn Hugo. It really has been through the wars. I got this in America because I remember it was really hard to get in the UK. This would have been 2019. This would have been like may 2019 i think i got this and it was like near impossible to get in the uk which is so funny now so i went and got this edition from the us and loved it very much it's very well loved <laughs> this is my non-fiction shelf here so i used to read a lot more non-fiction than i do now i do love it oh not rebel city of indra picking its way through but i do love non-fiction i'd say my highlights on here are Natives by Akala, Race and Class in the Ruins of Empire. This is a great look, particularly if you want a study of race in the UK. The Five by Harry Rubenhold. This is the stories of the five women that Jack the Ripper murdered. And it really is such a great account of their lives and what they went through rather than just portraying them as just prostitutes, which was how the media has always portrayed them. It's got pictures of them throughout. It really helps um, bring them to life. This is a series I definitely need to read more of and it's the Forgotten Women series. I have the other three. This is The Leaders. This is basically just nonfiction talking about women that history has forgotten because history is so male-centric it has gorgeous illustrations with each woman each woman has maybe like three pages about her it's you know very inclusive in terms of race uh countries uh time as well i love the illustrations in here and i just have a bit of like a special interest in women throughout history that history has forgotten i like listening to podcasts about it as well so yeah definitely need to read the other three in this series and then i would say one of my favorite non-fiction i'm still looking for one that really replicates what this does bad feminist by roxane gay oh my goodness <laughs> this is a series of essays by roxane gay and i just loved it so much she was funny she was insightful this is one of the only non-fictions i mean i don't often highlight but there's a few few highlights in there and I always say my favorite essay even though I love all the other essays my favorite one is her talking about her love for Scrabble it's this chapter here and just talking about how she loves Scrabble 
<laughs> I love, I love that chapter so, so much. So yeah, this is probably one of my favorite non-fictions I've ever read. So there we have it, finally. I don't even wanna think about how long this video is gonna be. <laughs> I don't want to think about it, but that was my bookshelf tour. I hope you guys all enjoyed it, having a closer look at my bookshelves. I really love them. I really am happy with how they look, so I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know some books that you loved that you spotted all around my bookshelf. I know I didn't hold each one out, but I think that's kind of boring, or at least for me editing, I wouldn't find that fun. So I'd rather just pick out a few highlights to show you. Um, let me know how you organize your shelves. I would love to know. If you got into the end of the video, comment the white heart emoji. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon in another video. Bye.